Representative Penn. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, fellow members of the House, unlimited and unregulated abortion hurts women and children. It is not a Kansas value. I urge you to support the value of both amendment to the Kansas Constitution. Kansans have the right and want the opportunity to vote on this issue. They desire, by the emails they've sent me, to vote to address the value of the both amendment on the primary ballot in 2022. And they want to courageously express both their intent and the consent of the governed. So I ask you, how does your vote today on value them both exhibit courage or cowardice? But before you answer that question, please consider the story of Estelle. Growing up so far north in Florida that they call it Georgia, Estelle was not raised in the most ideal of circumstances. Thrown out of her home, which was abusive, with her alcoholic father returning from the Korean War, and her jealous mother, she moved into her uncle's family in the same small town. They had a daughter that was near her age, so Estelle hung around with her cousin's friends. One evening in 1971, her cousin's boyfriend raped her. Now pregnant for the first time, without college education, without job prospects, a traditional family model, or a husband, Estelle was soon without a home again. Despite her trauma, and despite and against the advice of embarrassed family members, Estelle refused to compound her trauma by getting an abortion. She instead chose life for her son. Four years later, while in a physically and psychologically abusive marriage to a loveless husband who endangered her life, Estelle birthed her next son. And about two years after that, Estelle became preg pregnant again in that marriage and delivered her third son and was overwhelmingly pressured to abort that baby due to respiratory issues and developmental issues in the respiratory system. Estelle refused to even name that son. So deep was her hurt, her pain, and her anguish at that marital betrayal. The child was eventually named by that same female cousin who from all those years ago, her boyfriend had date raped her before Roe v. Wade was ever penned. I am that third son. Before she passed away, my mother Estelle revealed to me that I was supposed to be aborted. I was slated for death and brutal dismemberment in accordance with every excuse promoted by the pro-death forces. She had too many kids. I was sickly. I was born into a single income household with marital problems and financial insecurity. My life was dependent on my mother's mental health and convenience. And oh yes, my skin color put me on Margaret Sanger's human weed list. She endured so much pressure to kill me but refused to do so. In her deep courage, Estelle gave me life when all the forces of hell and society coerced her not to. I was able to be raised in foster care from the age of three through 18. I was able to serve and retire after a full, honorable career in the U.S. Army, to lead troops into battle and defend our freedoms against enemies, foreign and domestic, on four different operations on three different continents. I was able to join Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. I was able to attain several college degrees and to enter into the middle class, work in the private sector, and serve my community and my church. And today, I serve my neighbors in the House 85th District as their state representative here with each of you. My life matters. As a direct result of my late mother's unyielding commitment to loving her child, no matter the difficulties she faced, I am most proud and most blessed to be the loving husband of my wife, Talia, and the loving and devoted father to our two strong black boys and our two strong, beautiful little black girls. We teach them the great value that God has placed upon their lives. Their lives matter. There is no freedom, there is no right, more valuable and in need, and in need of defense than the most foundational of freedoms the right to life itself. Though I was supposed to be aborted, I stand before you today, a living, breathing testimony and proof 
that valuing both mothers and their babies is the loving choice. So again, I ask you, does your vote today on Value Them Both Amendment exhibit courage or cowardice? Courage is calling you. Trust women in Kansas. Respect the people of Kansas. Give the voters their voice on this important issue. I ask, I urge, I plea that you all vote to approve the Value Them Both Constitutional Amendment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for this opportunity. Thank you all for your work for Kansas, and uh, God bless you.